Hi guys, you are welcome to Halogenous Ideas. In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about Python strings. Okay, strings in Python are sequences of characters represented using single quotes or double quotes. All right, so you can have something like this. You can say message one, for example, equal to hello, no, hello world. And um, the second one, message two, can be equal to maybe Python is amazing. So you can see these two uh, data that, that I have over here. So message one and message two. Hello world, Python is amazing. Take notes. For this first one, I'm having single quotes at the beginning and single quotes at the end. For the second one, I'm having um, single quotes at the beginning and single quote at the end. I cannot have something like this message three. You will see that my Python code will start shouting. So I'm starting with a single quote and I'm closing with it. You can see, you can see the error. You can see everything is red now. You can see. So you you are not you cannot do that. So you start with a single quote, you close it with a single quote, you start with a double quote, you make sure that you are closing it with a double quote. So if I want to print message one and also print the type of message one, if I should run this, so I'm having hello world and I'm having str as the class. What if I want to print for message for message two? If I run this, you can see that I'm having Python is amazing, and I'm also having the class of str. So both of them, both of them, are regarded as Python strings. Both of them are valid Python strings, even though you are starting and ending this one with a single quote, you are starting and ending this one with a double quote. Both of them are valid Python strings. So. We have um, some string methods, some basic uh, string methods. So Python provides numerous built-in methods for working with strings. The first one we are going to be talking about is len, the len function. Okay, the the len function. The len function. I can't remember the name they call it. The the len function can behave um, can behave in so many ways. If you're passing in a string into the len function, the len will give you the number of characters that make up the string. For example, if I want to print len of message 1. So the len of message 1, it will be giving me the number of characters that make up message 1. Mind you, this spacebar that we have over here is also a character. So if I run this, you see it's giving me 11. Let's do a count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You see? 11. So if I want to get for message 2, if I run this, you see it's giving me 17, which is accurate. So we also have concatenation. If you remember vividly, this plus operator, it is used for two things, addition and concatenation. So I can have something like x equal to 5 and y equal to 7. If I come down to print x, plus y. Let me take this print statement away. So if I should run this, you see it's giving me 12, which is the regular addition that we are used to. Okay, But you can do concatenation. Concatenation basically is you merging two strings together. Okay, A practical application is when you have your first name and your last name. So let me let me leave this one too. So you can have something like first name to be say Chris and your last name can be Alexander. Okay. So if I want to concatenate the first name and the last name, I can do something like um, full name equal to first name plus last name. If I should print full name, guess what I'm going to be having? I'm going to be having Chris Alexander without any space. So I have to add the space manually by doing something like this. I have to add the space manually. If I should run this, 
you see i'm not getting chris space then alexander this is an example of concatenation and guess what you can concatenate as many strings as possible you can concatenate as many strings as possible you can do something like this no i have to use the plus then let me say let me say somewhere okay so let's assume that alexander is the middle name and i run this you see i'm having alexander somewhere one another thing i can do is to put the space bar before somewhere if i run this you see it is giving me chris alexander then somewhere which is um, a valid concatenation so another thing that you can do is repetition you can do repetition in python you can do something like this you can see message one you can see message one you can do something like um you can say repeated message you can do something like repeated message msg equal to message one multiplied by three for example so print repeated msg save this and run it you can see it's giving me hello world hello world and hello world so this is how you can repeat your strings this is how you can repeat your strings so another thing that i would like us to talk about is string indexing how to index your string so indexing basically is you can see the way that i have chris over here indexing is me being able to to take a particular character to locate a particular character meaning that to index that particular character so indexing in python starts from zero indexing your list your tuples your sets your dictionaries okay you cannot index a set and you cannot index a dictionary you can only index your list your tuples and your string for you to index your string let me use this um let me say let me say word equal to university okay print now for me to index a particular character in university is very simple all i have to do is to come up with the square bracket then i'll type the index of the particular character that i want to um extract so if for example i want to index r so i'm going to be starting from zero the the index of u is going to be zero for n is going to be one two three four five so if i come here and i put five if i run it you see it's giving me r let me clear my terminal so if i run index of five it will, it will be giving me r all right um what if i want to index t okay so r is five six seven eight if i should come here and i put in it if i run it it's giving me t this should be telling you something that since index is starting from zero so zero is giving me u that is telling you that the index of the last item the last character in a string is is, it, is going to be equal to the length of the string minus one all right for example if i come here and say the length of word minus one and i run it it will be giving me y the reason is because the length of word the length of word is going to be zero one two three four five six seven eight and nine okay so definitely the index of this last item over here is going to be eight okay it's going to be eight if i come here and i put it it's giving me t i think i must have counted wrongly okay then is giving me y zero one two three four five six seven eight nine yes it should be nine so i counted wrongly the first time sorry about that so clear now um this is for positive indexing okay in python we have positive positive indexing and we also have negative indexing so positive indexing is you indexing from the beginning down to the end negative indexing is you indexing from the end down to the beginning okay so if i have something like negative one negative one will be giving me the last item the last character in the string negative three will be giving me the third to the last character in the string 
alternatively if you have a list and you want to index the last item in the list just use your negative one and negative one will yield the last item in that list okay so that is how you do negative indexing in in python so another thing i want us to talk about is slicing is slicing so slicing is basically extracting a portion of something okay you have a, a the full string you want to extract a portion of the whole string you are taking a slice of the whole so how do you do slicing string slicing all you have to do for example if i want to slice from i to s okay so the beginning the beginning of your slide is inclusive but the end of your slice is exclusive i would explain so I'm going to be starting from 0, 1, and 2. So my slice is going to be starting from 2. But where will it end? I have to put a column over here. I have to put a colon over here. So where where is it going to end? I want it to end at R, right? So I have to stop at S if I want it to include R. So let us try it out. So the index of university 0 one two three four five if i should stop at five it will not include the item at the fifth index in the slice if i you can see it's giving me ive but i want to include r so i have to include i have to make it six because it will not include r all right so that is how you do your string slicing what if you want to slice from the beginning to a particular point if you want to slice from the beginning of your string to a particular point how do you do that if I want to stop at um, E, for example, and the index of E is um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm going to be stopping at 5. I can decide to say 0. This will work just fine. If I call this, you see, it's giving me uni, uni VE, okay? It's giving me uni VE, which is what I want. What if I remove the 0? and I run it again it will give me exactly the same thing since I'm slicing from the beginning up to um, up to the element at the fifth index but it will be giving me the element at the fourth index so this is how you do um, string slicing from the beginning of your list to a particular point what if you want to index from a particular point to the end of your string the same thing you, I want to index from R for example to the end so I'll be putting um, that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to be starting from 5. Okay, then I'll just remove this one. Let me clear my terminal. So run it. You see, it is giving me from R down to the end. So that is how you can do slicing. Now, another thing that you should take note of is that the same way you have positive indexing in Python, you also have negative indexing. Since you can slice using um, positive numbers, you can also slice using negative numbers. How would you do that? If you want to slice from, for example, you can do something like from negative 5 to maybe negative 2. And it works just fine. Just know where to start and where to stop. All right? Where to start and where to stop. For example, you can also do something like this from negative 5 down to the end so just like i said know what works for you so another thing that i want us to talk about is membership okay the membership um operator if you remember very well the membership operator we can also use it here so you can see that i have um u in this particular string i can do something like um i can say u in word this is going to be giving me a boolean value which is true or false if i run this you see it's giving me true the reason is because you actually exists in the word university all right you exist in university that's the reason why it's giving me true what if i use small u and i run this it will be giving me false because the u that exists in university it's a capital u and both of them are not the same thing all right both of them are not the same thing that is how you test for uh, membership and using uh, strings so you can we have some string modification methods with these strings you can modify what your strings looks like you can modify the content of your string so the first one that i want us to talk about 
is the um the one that will make it uppercase or lowercase so you can say word dot upper okay so if i run this you see it's giving me university all caps um clear it's giving me university of all caps what if i say lower and i run this what am i doing okay <laughs> i made a mistake so exit clear this is what i'm supposed to do so lower just run this okay you see it's giving me university and the first character that is starting with a capital letter everything is now starting with a small letter all right so that is how you do uppercase and um, lowercase we also have capitalize we also have capitalize so you can say unilag is the best university so i can do something like let me use sentence now control d no z control d sentence okay what am i doing <laughs> this is supposed to be s okay so if i say capitalize and i run this so you can see what is happening over here capitalize will capitalize the first character only the first character that is what is happening over here okay the whole string only the first character is going to be capital letter that is how capitalize works so if you wanted to have title case, just come here, title, and um, run it. So you can see, title case. So, I think there's one other one that we refer to as swap case. Swap case. Swap. No, Z. Swap case. If I should run this. You can see Unilag is the best university. So basically, I'm swapping the capital letters with the small letters, then the small letters with the capital letters. That's what I'm doing over here. Like I'm changing all the capital letters to small letters, then all the small letters, I'm changing them to capital letters. That is what is happening with the swap case. So, um, if you want to count the occurrence, the number of occurrence of a substring in a string, you can also do that you can do something like this for example if i want to count how many times you capital u appears in this particular string i can do something like this so i can say sentence dot count then i'll pass in the string which is you if i run this you see it's giving me two because you can see that you occurs here and here both of them are capital use okay if i should come here and bring some small use there I run, it will still be giving me two because this won't be accounted for they are um, lowercase use so clear then we move on you can also find a substring you can also find a substring and it will return the first occurrence or negative one if not found so how can you find a substring it is very very simple i can say if i want to find maybe u and i that should be sentence dot find if i should run this it's giving me 23 all right it's giving me 23 so that is um yeah that is the index of u basically because that is where uni starts counting from if i should come here and make this uppercase for example u n i and i run it it's, it will be giving me zero let us create another string and i will call this string something like um say string let me see let me use word or phrase equal to python or well, i love python i actually do so i love python i can do something like um print phrase dot find love 
So if I should run this, it's giving me two. This first one. Let me comment it out. It's giving me two for this one because zero, one, and two. Okay, which is the index of L. All right, because that. It, it, the index of L is where the string occurs, the first occurrence. If I have another love over here, it will just it will not it will not give me the index of uh, this particular love. It will just give me the first occurring, um, the first occurrence, the index of the first occurrence. That is what I'll be getting. So, what if I want to find Python? And I run it. It's giving me seven. What if I use small p it will give me negative one because it does not exist okay so clear now let's move on to joining strings joining strings you can have a list of strings for example you can have a list of let me say a r r an array then you call this um i um a boy so I can just come here and do something like um, a r r s t r. Then I'll say a r r dot. No, I'll just say empty string dots join. Then I'll bring in words. So no, I'll bring in a r r rather a r r. So if I should run this print a r r s t r if i run this guess what i'll be getting i am a boy what if i put a space here and i run it you see i'm getting i am a boy what if i put an asterisk maybe three asterisks and i run this you see i am a boy so you see how the join method the join string method you see how it works so the next thing that we want to talk about string reversal a uh, string traversal rather string traversal um, is a way by which you can um, visit all the characters in your string like you can visit all the characters in your string you can iterate through each character in a string all right so i can have something like this um, for example this phrase over here if i want to iterate it i, I might decide to use a for loop or a while loop so just watch the playlist for all these tutorials they will be uploaded by the time you are watching the video it might have been uploaded to so just check the playlist so um for this phrase now i can do something like um using a for loop for character in phrase for character in phrase just print the character all right so if i run this you see it is giving me all these other ones that I don't want. So, and it's giving me negative ones somewhere. Okay. Yes. So, you can see, I love, let me clear my thumb. Okay, I don't have to clear my terminal actually. If I run this, you see, I love Python, love, which is this last one over here. So, that is, that is it basically. Me traversing, visiting all the characters in the python um, string so if i want to use a while loop to do the same thing it is very very simple for me to use a while loop how will it work i will say i can do something like um count equal to zero then i will say while the length uh, while count is less than the length of the phrase don't forget i have to remove one okay no 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 it should be like this so you are going to be printing the phrase indexing count then don't forget to increment your count if not count plus equal to one if not you run into what we call an infinite loop don't worry we'll discuss it so while count less than the length of the phrase okay for as long as it is less than the length of the phrase the first thing you want to do is to print the phrase indexing count all right then after indexing count you increment your count 
so that um, the first time this loop is going to be running, you are going to be having your count at zero. The next time it will be running, you'll be having one. The next time it will be running, you'll be having two. That way, you are sure that it's actually incrementing the count. If you do not increment the count, it will keep on giving you I, 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 and your system might crash because you are running into an infinite loop. All right. So let me just run this code. You see, it is giving me exactly the same thing. Okay, if I should remove this count over here, I don't know, it might overload my system to the point where I have to pause the recording and I don't want to do that. So just make sure you don't ever um, do that. So we also have string formatting. So it was introduced in Python 3.6. Um, F strings provide a concise way to embed expressions inside string literals. It provides a way by which you can inject dynamic data into your string. Okay, it provides a method for you to inject dynamic content into your string. So I'm going to be using age. I can do something like this. I can say. I can say age equal to maybe twenty three. Then I'll say. Um, let me say sentence equal to, I'll start with a formatted string, then I'll say you are then age years old. So if I should run this, um, I didn't print it actually, I didn't print it, so I have to print, I have to print sentence so running this you see it's giving me you are 23 years old what if i say 24 and i run this you see you are 24 years old what if i say 42 or 48 you see you are 48 years old I, i've been able to use the formatted string to inject dynamic content into this um, particular string if i should remove the f Guess what? If I should run this, it will it will not treat this expression over here as a formatted string. It will just treat it as a regular string, all right? Which is not what you want. So don't forget to put your f. There is another way to do this particular formatted string, and for you to do the formatted string, all you have to do is to do something like um, you can say, let me use this, let me use this one again. Copy. Then let me take this one. I can say sentence equal to. I'll just take this one out. Dot format. Then I'll pass in age, and that is it. It will give me exactly the same thing. So print. What do I want to print? I want to print my sentence. So for me to print my sentence, run this. You see, it's giving me your 48 years old. This is exactly what we had upstairs. 15. Run. You see, you are 15 years old, which is exactly what we have. Okay. So both of them, they are basically two different ways to do the same thing. So we also have um, escape characters in Python. Escape characters are special characters that um, you won't readily find on your keyboard or some special characters that have been reserved for other use by python so what are the escape characters that we have i'm going to be introducing you to three of them we have more but i believe these are the ones that um, you'll be using often so some escape characters that we have the first one new line okay this is for new line. If you want to create a new tab, you say T new tab. So if you want to no, if you want to print a backslash as a string, so this is a back slash. We also have um, we also have um, I think these are the three that you most likely will be using mostly. These are the three that you most likely will be using. Um, for now so the new line the new, you can just check google for it please we have so many other escape characters in python but i'll just use leave this three for now so 
in the first one a new line you can do something like um print no let me say word or sentence equal to hello let me say Chris then you go to the next line how are you doing today if I should run this no I've not printed my sentence if I should run this you see hello Chris how are you doing today it transferred control to the next line to, to ask me how are you doing today okay which is what I did over here if you see this escape character over here if I wanted it to give me a tab spacing a tab spacing if I run this you see hello Chris then a tab spacing how are you doing today so that is that is that basically if I want to print a backslash in my string and I use only one you see um, normally I'm supposed to use two here maybe because it is attached to a H normally if you want to print a backslash you use double backslash like this so that is that is how to print a backslash in, in Python so I think um, so let me clear my terminal then the last thing that we're going to be talking about is the raw string we spoke about the formatted string just now but we want to talk about the raw string so I'll just talk about it briefly um, raw strings are used to treat backslash as literal characters okay you use raw strings to treat your backslash as a literal character so it is used mostly when you want to write the path to a file so normally you might be having something like especially for Windows users you might be having something like path equal to your raw string then you do something like um, C then you can have something like this then users then you can have something like Alice then you come here to say documents so this is an example of a raw string this is an example of a raw string it retreats all the characters in this particular string as a string literal all right it retreats all the characters so there will be, yeah, there won't be any special treatment for like all these um uh, backslash t backslash n it won't affect anything since you are using a raw string over here so basically that is how to use um, a raw string strings are very versatile in python offering a plethora of methods for manipulation and traversal and understanding these features empowers developers to work effectively with text-based data making python a powerful language for handling strings in various applications so that will be all for python strings don't forget to like the video and um, subscribe to our youtube channel if you have any comments please the comment section is open and we have a community to support um beginners that are just coming into the tech space okay if you want to code our community is open for you we are ready to share our knowledge with you as much as you are going to be sharing yours with us too <laughs> so thank you very much i'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now